And this is my wife Nancy. We're coming to you from Global Connections Church, Kiwana. And I uh, just want to welcome you today. Uh, Nancy's just going to say hi to everybody. Hi everyone. It's um, really a time when we're really missing each other and so we're sending real virtual hugs over to you and thanking yep. you for your support, hanging in there with us. We know we can talk on, on the phone and texting but uh, we're just so looking forward to the day yes. when we can be back together again and, and we're indeed. believing for it to be very soon. Yes. So we're just sending out love and hugs today and saying God bless you all. Yeah. And all the ladies from chats. And oh, I'm definitely meeting all the, missing all the ladies from chats. All the Those coffee. beautiful ladies, our morning teas <laughs> that are so special, and Beverly with her cheese muffins. Oh. I can hardly wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be good when we get yeah. back, and we'll really just celebrate and hug each other's necks, and uh, it'll be a great time. So yeah. bless you all. Amen. Amen. Good on you, man. Have, Have a fun. good day. Good on you. <laughs> Bye. Hey, we are living in such a such a strange, strange time where it, there's so many things happening. There's so many voices. Uh, confusion reigns for many. Some are saying go, and some are saying stop. Some are saying do, and some are saying don't. Uh, I heard Christians arguing or disagreeing with each other on Messenger the other day, and others are saying it's uh, uh, 5G that's causing the problem, and we're blaming this one and blaming that one. Uh, the enemy wants to uh, play havoc with our minds at this time. And this is what we've got to be careful of. Uh, we've got to understand um, that he wants to unsettle us. Uh, James 1.8 says this, it says, If you are double-minded, that's confused, uh, you will be unstable in all your ways. It's Jesus and him alone uh, that we need to trust today. Yes, Jesus is the answer. He is the only answer for the world today. The Word of God says that no weapon formed against us will prosper. It's time to really dig into what God says. He is not confused. He, he knows that, uh, that the end time is coming. He, he realizes the enemy does too. I believe that uh, the scene is being set. It's an amazing thing that's happening right now. and We'll just go into that a little bit deeper later on. But uh, right now, I just want to somehow or other build again inside of us. And I'm speaking to myself today too because I need to be able to understand and know who I believe in and what I believe in this time of shaking. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Direct means to make smooth or straight. Trust is to trust somebody. To trust somebody, you have to know them. You don't trust a stranger. Uh, really, today, you've got to know God. You've got to really know who he is. When you gave your life to Jesus, really, you put your trust in him. You believed in him. You believed that what he'd done for you. You believed everything about him. Uh, Jesus is paid the price. He, was, uh, he, he died for us. Everything that he did at Calvary, you believed in him. This scripture speaks about, and lean not to your own understanding. This word lean is a, is a word that is used a lot lately. And, and people say, lean into this thinking. Lean into that way. Lean into what I'm saying or lean into to this particular discussion, whatever it might be, to lean into it, uh, to lean into what's being said, to lean into what's going on. But the Bible says to lean into him, lean into Jesus, lean not to your own understanding. And in these times when, when we realize that what's going on today is not natural, it's a spiritual war. It's something that's doing, been done in the realm of the Spirit. And our own understanding, the Bible says, is that enmity to the things of the Spirit. And you'll never ever work it out in your own mind. We have to lean on Him. We have to lean into Him. We've got to believe what He says. We've got to believe what the Word of God says in this hour. Or we will be totally confused because we're hearing so many voices today. We're hearing so many things. Yeah, lean into this says lean into this teaching or lean into what's being said here. In this time, 
we are living. Which way are you leaning? What are you leaning into? Are you leaning into the negativity? Are you leading into the discouragement and the despair that's going on, the uncertainty? Look, can I say this, and, I'm, I, and I want to say it loud and clear. God knows what is going on. He watches over you. He cares for you. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows everything about you. What are you leaning into and what are you drawing upon? Are you drawing upon God's word and God's promises? The Bible says in Isaiah 55 verse 9, it says that my ways are not your ways. My ways are higher than your ways. So the natural mind sometimes cannot comprehend it. But I want to tell you that God has got an answer. This word, the word of God, this is what we've got to lean into. We've got to lean into what God says today. Lean into him. Are you leaning towards the propaganda? Uh, they say that, they're saying so many things. The world, they say, as we knew it, will never be the same again. Well, who cares? <laughs> Perhaps that's what needs to happen, amen? Because people have been on a, just heading in a direction there that's taken really the world away from God. I thank God today that people have got their eyes, He's got our attention today. Some say it came from China. Some say it came from uh, G5. Um, some people even say that God did it. You know, God could never do anything like this. God did not bring this virus. He is the healer. He is the deliverer. Our present help in a time of need. God wants to, wants to flood around your life. He wants, to, he wants to bring hope back into you. He wants to pour out his spirit upon you. He wants to help you in this time. He's our, our present help in time of need. Anyone who says God is doing this horrible thing doesn't know the Lord. They don't know him. To know him, you know that he would never do anything like this. God will use it. God will use it. He will use it. But the result will be life and not death and destruction. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. The opposite to trust is doubt. If you walk with the Lord, if you if you walk with the Lord and you lean towards negativity and doubt, you see, there's a lot of Christians that somehow or other negativity, they draw to negativity. They draw to the to the bad things. Everything's bad. Cup's half full. All this sort of stuff. If you lean towards those people, lean towards that, your life will be up and down. It will be, you'll never find victory. You'll never find the answers to life. If you hang around a lot of those people, you find that you yourself start to find that negativity gets around you too. You'll be unstable and fall. Many Christians lead a defeated life because they've allowed doubt to come into their minds. Trust brings peace. Trust really brings peace. If you can trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding and know that, hey, Jesus, you, 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 you're in control. You know what's going on. This has not taken you by surprise. And uh, get excited about what God does. Trust being, brings peace. Doubt will bring fear. Life is full of choices. The Bible says, choose you this day who you will serve. The Bible also says you can't serve two masters. You can't serve the world. You can't serve the world and God. You can't live in doubt and fear. You can't live in frustration. I remember one day I was on a, went on a plane and, and uh, there was a young man and I'd known him for a fair while. He was a, he was a Christian. But obviously he had a lot of fear in his life. 
And he was sitting up uh, in, in the plane there. And as I walked on the plane, this young man saw me and yelled out, Praise the Lord! <laughs> he said, I'm, oh, I'm safe. Neil's on the plane. Somehow or other he had faith that God would not allow me to die in a plane crash, but perhaps the doubt in him said that he could die in a plane crash. So when he saw me, he was so happy that I was on the plane. And I gave him a little wave, and, and anyhow, that was the end of that. You see, today, we've got to be able to... We've, we're believing something. We're either believing in the negative or the positive. Can you trust God's Word? Last week, and, and I think the week before, and perhaps next week again, I've got a scripture that I want to keep repeating and repeating and repeating. It's in uh, 1 John 5. It says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is a victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Lean into God's Word. Lean into His promises. Who is He who overcomes the world? But He who believes and does not doubt that Jesus is the Son of God. They overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They loved not their lives unto death. That's in Revelations 12, verse 11. The word of God is alive. It is powerful. Hebrews 4, 2, verse 12 says this, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts, of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him who we must give account. You see, when you read this, this is not natural speaking. This is the language of the Spirit. The language of the Spirit is very, very different to the la to normal, natural thinking language. God calls those things that be not as though they were. God calls those things that are dead back into life. God, God is, is a spirit man. God is spirit. And when this word, this word is a spirit book, it is not a novel. It is not something that you just read. It is a spirit book. It contains the words of life. And as you read it, if you just, as you read it and you're asking God to open it, this Bible, you might think I'm crazy, but this book will speak to you. This book will reveal to you. It will show you. It will teach you. It will help you how to find victory in this life that you and I are living in. This is the book of life. It is an amazing book. This, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amazing statement that was made by Greg last week. This is the day that the Lord uh, has made and we should be glad in it. Greg was just having a little, uh, little conversation with the church people that could log on and, and it was very interesting. God made this day and everything that is in it. In Genesis 1 verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. See, you've got to be able to come to this point where God is. You must believe that God is and that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. He won't leave you naked. He will not leave you disturbed. If you can trust in the Lord and lean into Him, and not lean into your own understanding, but in every way acknowledge Him. He will direct your path. He will make your path straight. He will make it smooth. He will help you navigate. He will help you walk through this life. This particular time, you need to have your hand in the hand of Him who created the heavens and the earth. You need to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Not what the soothsayers are saying. Not what the popular opinions are saying. Not what perhaps different governments want you to hear. You need to hear what the Spirit of God is saying in this hour. I believe that God is saying, all is well. Hallelujah. All is well. Keep your eyes on me. Follow me. Listen to what I've got. Uh, incline your ear to what I'm saying. 
Listen to me and I will lead you and I'll guide you. I believe it's an exciting day. God made this day and everything in it. Let me just read it again in Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. A lot of people say, well, you know, in the beginning, in the beginning. Well, who made God? I don't know who made God. I don't know everything. But all I know is that there are supernatural things, that phenomena that blow my natural mind as I look into the heavens and as I understand that I can go as far and they've got, they've got rockets and things and telescopes and different things now that are hurtling out to space at, the, at an alarming rate. If you were to uh, be put in that, one of those capsules as a little baby, by the, you could die at 100 years of age and still not reach the end. You could live to 1,000 and still not reach the end because there is no end. And that blows my natural mind because in my natural mind and natural man's thinking, everything has an end. <laughs> but there's no end out there. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going. I, I often think that perhaps when you get out there, all that far, there's a big sign saying, the end. <laughs> then if you look at the other side of the sign, it says the beginning. <laughs> I don't know. You might think I'm a bit silly. But you see, this is a spiritual thing. It's not a natural thing. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In 1 John 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not comprehend it. It could not overtake it. Let me say it again. This book is not a novel. It is a book uh, that is to be spiritually understood. Spiritually. Spiritually understood. This book contains life. It contains amazing things. And it will show you and it will teach you. book contains the spirit of life. God is watching over His Word or His promises to perform them. He will perform His promises. In, one, in John 1.14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. This supernatural being that was in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, this supernatural being became flesh and dwelt among us. His name is Jesus, Son of grief no more. He can heal the brokenhearted. He will open wide prison doors. He is my Savior. He is the Savior of the world. God is overseeing. He's watching. He's watching everything. He became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus said, I'll never ever leave you nor forsake you. God is watching, overseeing. I want to liken what God is doing right now. You see, last week I spoke about we have got no idea what is happening right now in the realm of the Spirit. Just like the Christians before the day of Pentecost, they had no idea. There was fear for their lives. There was most probably Thomas would have been telling everybody that this is the end and we're all going to die. There would have been others there that would have been saying, they're, they're coming to get you, they're, they're going to crucify you, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. So there was all these things that were going on. They had no idea, really, what was happening in the realm of the Spirit. The day of Pentecost was about to happen. The outpouring of the Spirit of God, one of the greatest phenomena, one of the greatest things that could have happened, ever happened to mankind. As the early church, as the new church, the New Testament church was birthed with power, with authority, with victory, with life. Hallelujah. But they were all, at that particular time, confused. Peter spoke to his, the rest of the mob just before and said, I'm going fishing. And the rest of them said, I'm coming with you. They, they, they were about ready to give up. They didn't really know because they were listening and listening and listening. I thank God today that we have the mighty power of God. We have the outpouring of the Spirit of God, which we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
Because God now has come and He said, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. We won't be just like fluffy ducks running around the place, running after here and running after there. We will stand our ground. We will know who we are. We are children of the Most High God. We are born again. Hallelujah. We are children of destiny. That's who we are. We're not going to allow the negatives of life to get around us. We're going to keep hold of God. Just like that day of the great outpouring of the Spirit. I haven't got a clue really what's going on. All I know is that there's something going on in the realm of the Spirit. And I've got my ears open. I, I want to hear. I want to listen. I, I want to hear the Spirit of God. I, 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 look, if it's G, 5G or whatever you call it, if it's a, if it's a Chinese or whatever it is, I, it doesn't really matter. All I know is that no weapon formed against me will prosper. That's what God says. And if I can rise up and if I can overtake it and if I can use the Word of God, it says that we can condemn those things that come against us. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he says, I will raise up a standard against him. That is the church. That's you and me that God wants to raise up in this hour that we live in. Amen. You better get ready. You better get ready. I'm getting ready to dance. I'm getting ready to shout. I, 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 I don't know. I'm just believing for a new outpouring of the Spirit that's going to cause this young old fella to rise up and dance and, and shout for joy. Amen. Anyhow, getting on back here. Uh, I want to liken it to the uh, organizers or the coordinators of the Olympic Games. A worldwide event. Basically the whole world involved. Every nation. The preparation is extreme. Things going on. The shouts as the flame that has been carried throughout every nation of the world. I think you might be able to understand where I'm starting to come from here. Because there's been something that's been going throughout every nation of the world. I want to tell you it's the fire of God. It's not a natural fire, but it's the fire of God that's beginning to burn in the bones of the church again. The sleeping giant called the church is being awakened by the fire. We're beginning to rise, amen. We're beginning to rise. Oh, I tell you what, this is our greatest hour. This is our, this is our best time. I am so glad that I'm alive right now. I am so glad that I'm alive in this hour because in the realm of the Spirit, something's happening. And in the natural, the Olympics there, as this, as this, per, as this one runs in with the, with the uh, flame and uh, people there in the auditorium begin to shout and begin to rise up. There's one of the nations of the world, I don't know which one it was now, but they lit a, a flaming, uh, an arrow, and they lit that up and they fired it into a target. And as it hit that target, it burst into flames. And the whole stadium was lit with light. I liken that to our end time days. I believe God is organizing a far greater event. <laughs> God is organizing a far greater event than has ever been seen before. The God of the exceedingly abundantly above, I believe is about to show himself strong. He's about to put on a show that will eclipse anything that's ever been seen before. Every eye will see and behold. But God is overseeing, I believe, is the return of of our Lord Jesus Christ. I've, I've said this a lot because it's obviously, there's a lot of things we don't know about end times. Will he come with a thousand trumpets? Will there be thunders and lightnings like never seen before? Will there be angels singing? Will there be choirs of 10,000 times 10,000? Will there be harps and and instruments and, and, I don't know, timbrels and everything else. Something that no human has ever seen. I don't know. I really don't know. 
All I know is He's coming for me. All I know is coming for me. Is He coming for you? Is He, is he coming back for you? I, I, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Christians, this could be our finest hour. It's, it's time to rise up, you people of power. In the book of Acts, it's not just a, a little verse that was put in there. It says, you shall receive power. Holy Ghost power, anointing when the Spirit of God comes upon you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Don't lean to the logic in this hour. In all your ways acknowledge Him. That's faith. And He will lead you in this time of trouble. If you are an unbeliever, what I'm saying most holy sounds so strange to you. But I can understand because I didn't get saved until I was 27. And that's still young from where I'm at now. I had no idea, I had no, no reality of, of the things of God. I wasn't brought up in a Christian home. I didn't know anything. I just heard a few rumors about God that sent people to hell. And my dad told me that most Christians, it was a crutch. I want to tell you, friends, he's more than a crutch. He's more than a crutch. But you see, my dad, at, I think 82 or 83, gave his life to Christ. He surrendered to this Christ that he thought one stage was a, just a crutch. Somebody had told him that. And you might have heard a lot of things where people have told you different things about the church. And Yes, it doesn't have a good record in some areas. But I want to tell you, Jesus has never changed. He died for you on a cross. He gave his life for you. He wants to flood your life. That day in my life at 27, not really knowing, but I heard some people. They were singing songs about Jesus. Just simple little songs, but in those songs... See, I said to you before that, that this book can speak to you. You see, it's a spirit thing. Those songs, though they were songs, they began to speak to me. They began to speak to me about it. And I, and I started to see a Jesus that I'd never seen before. And they made an altar call that night. And Nancy and I both got born again together that night. It's a few years ago now. Friend, I was leaning to my own understanding. But friend, I want to say to you today, acknowledge Jesus Christ. He is the answer for the world today. And I'm asking you today, would you give your life to him? It's very, very simple, really. And it's the simplicity of it that confounds the wise. If somebody said to you, you could pay a million dollars or a thousand dollars, whatever it is, and, and you get a ticket to heaven, a lot of people would say, oh, I'll, I'll have that. But because it's a free gift, we just don't understand it. That somebody could love me that much, that he would take my place and die for my sins. You ask him today, Lord, would you forgive me? We've all sinned. Come on. We've all sinned and fallen short of his glory. We've all done silly things, done wrong things, yes. But that's the grace of God that can forgive us. What you do today is you just say, Jesus, would you please forgive me? I acknowledge that I was a sinner and that you died for me and I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Would you come into my life? Would you touch me? Would you touch me today? I'm going to pray a prayer with you today and if that's your heart and you want to do that, I'm just going to lead you in a prayer. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, come to you today and I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to come into my life. 
I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Please, Jesus, reveal yourself to me and help me. Amen and amen. See, that day, I'm a, I, I said a very, very simple prayer that day when I got saved. I said, Jesus, help me. I might have said, God, help me. It's God, help me. Amen. And something of the Spirit came in. You see, Jesus said, if you open the door, I will come in. Jesus doesn't want to just be on the outside. He wants to come into your life. He wants to help you. If you're today and, and you need healing in your body, Jesus is our healer. He's our healer. Man, I've seen people just dramatically touched and healed. We're thinking of Hazel today and Levi and others that really need your touch. People that really, really need your touch today, Father. Father, we lift them to you today and we pray for your hand of mercy, your hand of grace to touch them and heal them, deliver them, set them free. Let the mighty power of a risen Savior come into their lives today. And Father, we'll just give you all the praise, we'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's been great sharing with you today, and I pray that, uh, that, that you know, it's been a help to you, and that's all I want. If you have been helped, why don't you contact us? We'll have some uh, information uh, on the screen that you can contact us in or with, and we would really, really love to hear from you. If you got born again, please let us know. We're, you know. We don't want to intrude in your life. We don't want to be you know, in your face. But perhaps we could send you some literature. Perhaps we could send you a Bible. Perhaps we could help you in, in some small way on your journey. On your journey. For the Christian church today, we just miss you guys all so much. We, we just long to be able to get together. I just, I just want to be able to come and, and be part of that worship that, that we had. It's, it's great trying to worship it on your own, but it's not the same uh, with, with all you guys and just being together. And uh, I just pray today that you'll have an amazing day. Have an amazing day. Greg will be coming on and jo Joanne, uh, they're uh, still locked in in uh, America. I don't know when we're going to get them back. But they'll be, uh, you'll catch them at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning as usual. And uh, we'll most surely put this on again straight after that for uh, people that, uh, that need to, you know, watch it or whatever if you haven't already watched it. But anyhow, you be blessed and, and have an amazing day. Amen.